not as much fun because typically we're going to be doing, you know, um, factoring, right? And for the rest of the examples that I assigned for you guys, we're, we're going to be looking at factoring. But what if I had the problem f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 2? This is not factorable. We can't factor it using our regular technique, right? So what we can do, though, is we can find the zeros using the quadratic formula, because that's what the quadratic formula gives us. It gives us the zeros of a quadratic, not of a cubic or a quartic, of a quadratic. So I can go ahead and just use the zeros to, if I want to find the zeros that make this equation true, or the values of x, I'm sorry, that make this equation true, I can just use the quadratic formula. And remember, guys, the coefficient is a. Here is your b, and here is your c. So I'm just going to plug those values into the quadratic formula. Opposite of b is 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times a times c, which is negative 2. And that's all over 2 times a. Now, most students don't usually have an issue with plugging it in, but we usually get to a problem with simplifying. So let's go ahead and simplify this result here. So I have 2 plus or minus the square root, negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 2 is an 8, all over 2. All right. Now, 4 plus 8 is 12. And that is fine. But a lot of times in these examples, we're going to be having things simplified. We're going to want everything to be simplified. So we got to see, well, can we simplify the square root of 12? Well, if you guys remember, in your part four of your summer assignment that I gave you, I gave you the rules of radicals, right? And that is part of the rules of radicals was simplifying radical expressions. We can't simplify the square root of 7. But the square root of 12, we can't take the square root of 12. The only numbers we know it takes the square root of are what we call square numbers, like square root of 1, square root of 4, square root of 9, square root of 16. So 12 is in between 9 and 16, right? We can't, but we can't take the square root. It's not a square number. So what we want to do is say, well, we, can we rewrite 12 as a product of a square number and something else? Well, you can see that 4 is divisible into 12. So you guys would all agree that we can rewrite this as 4 times 3, right? And then using the rules of radicals, we could rewrite that product as square root of 4 times square root of 3, which can simplify to the square root of 3. So x is equal to 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 3 over 2. Now the next thing that we have is continually to simplify this. Remember, guys, that 2 you know, times x plus 1 is equal to 2x plus 2. Right? I usually go through this, and students are like, yeah, OK, I got that. I remember it. But, but then when I do this with division, nobody wants to do it for every single one. Remember, guys, x plus 1 divided by 2 is x over 2 plus 1 over 2. That 2 distributes to both of those terms. right? Just doesn't go to 1, distributes to both of those terms. So, so what that means is this 2 divides into both of these terms. So I have x equals 2, oh, I'm sorry, 2 divided by 2 is 1, plus or minus 2 square root of 3. Now let's write these zeros actually out. So I have x equals 1 plus 2 square root of 3, and x equals 1 minus 2 square root of 3. Right, so instead of doing the plus or minus, I'm just doing one each. Yes? Why didn't you cancel out the twos? Oh, I should have. I'm sorry. It's square root of 3, right? Sorry. The 2 divides into both those. I said it, and I just didn't do it. All right, so again, let's go back through the issue. When we have the zeros and we want to find the factors, what are we doing? Setting the, setting the zeros equal to? Yeah. To 0, right? So. Basically, I'm just, I'll just do 1. Hopefully, you guys will get the pattern, and then you guys can just do it on your own. These are my two factors. So if I asked you to write the linear factorization, it would look like this. It looks really, really confusing. But hopefully, you guys can see that the process is not like overly complicated. It's just dealing with a little bit extra terms. So that would be your linear factorization. You can see both these zeros would have a multiplicity of 1. So that is basically what I wanted to cover with you guys. What we're doing is we are opening the door now to a new um,